Michael Dixon, the punter, didn't get named. And his Twitter handle was only uh, six letters long. It's not a, you know, you got to find a space. It's no good. When you mess with punters, you mess with me. So I said, we've got to call Tom Herman and hold him to account. And that is the way I welcome in the new coach of Texas football, Tom Herman, here on the Rich Eisen Show. How are you, coach? I'm doing great, Rich. What a welcome. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fired up, coach. You know what I'm saying? I got fired I up. Got, yeah. So why, why, why'd you slag on your punter like that? I uh, just um, kind of a fun little deal I, I do since I've, I've, I've been a head coach. I, I refuse to call uh, – Specialists by their by their name until they graduate. I, I just I, I got a hard time. Uh, you know, hopefully Mike only plays about uh, six six plays a game, like and that. and uh, you know, uh, hopefully, you know, at, at six plays a game, I'm not sure that the, the head coach that you deserve to be called by your first name. So <laughs> when they graduate, I, I call them by their first name. But until then, they're, they're the punter, the kicker, and the the deep snapper, or or I, or from what I've read, um, other names too, coach that are uh, safe for work, right? When, when they screw up, yeah, they've been they've been called other names, but uh, whiskey drinkers, Whis- whiskey drinkers, chain smokers, is this that <laughs> is that true? Uh, I I don't know that I've ever called them that name, but I I, <laughs> I like to have fun and think because you know I mean they. They, they kick for a little bit in the beginning of practice, then you don't see them until the end, and you're like, well, where did you guys go? What do you do? you over there drinking whiskey and, and smoking cigarettes all, all day long? <laughs> no, Hasselbeck, Matt Hasselbeck always says that if you want to know what's going on in a soap opera or a TV show, you ask the punters and the kickers because that's what they're doing during practice. That's no what he would always tell me. Yeah, I think- Sneak away mm-hmm. into the equipment room and, and watch Days of Our Lions or something like that. But you know, but then, but I, I you know, I, I'm, I've been, I've been ki- holding up for punters and kickers too, uh, coach, for years. And I just saw that, and I just figured I had a, I just had to kick the tires in this whole thing. And and maybe no, I know, and and I, I appreciate you standing up for um, the little people in in this uh, in this business. But <laughs> uh, you know, when they when they graduate and, and okay. they do really good and. and the good thing is, is, is our punter, you know, he was a Ray guy finalist as a sophomore yeah. last year. And so we, from what I've, I've heard, he's, he's uh, a pretty good player. And so, uh, but that's still not going to change my, my stance on <laughs> when I, when I officially call him by his first name. Well, I got to I got to I guess, Hey, look, things have been working out for you on how you conduct yourself and your business. Uh, now head coach at Texas. I do want to talk about your journey because it's fascinating to me um, that you part of your background comes from the sports television business where you were a production assistant and cut and tape for Fox Sports, correct, Coach? Yeah, NFL on Fox. Actually, I, was, I, I would drive to the set on uh, Sundays, and I was a – I can't remember my title, highlight coordinator or whatever, but uh, I think, you know, I, my job was to sit and, and watch a game and log – log the game and and you know each screenshot when the when the camera would would make a different screenshot i would i would log it you know hey uh, close up on emmett smith you know uh you know whatever the case may be and then so when when howie jb and terry you know when when you're watching the uh, the packers versus the vikings and they say hey let's let's find out how the the rams and the falcons are doing uh you know that that little 10 second, 15 second highlight deal would, would be my creation. And I, I thought I, I wanted to, to, to be like you, Rich, to be honest with you. Growing up, I, I did PA announcing for, for all of our men's, women's basketball and, and baseball in college and had my own radio show, the, the whole nine. So I, I, at one point in my life, I, I was really um, screwed up in the head and I thought I wanted, I thought I wanted to be one of you guys. And, uh, but uh it, it didn't work out that way, but I, I had a really good time doing it. Well, you know, I, I remember when I was doing highlights on Sports Center way back in the day, perhaps before you were in uh, with Fox Sports, that when I was handed- oh, I absolutely remember you on on Sports Center. You were you were one of my favorites, man. Oh. Don't don't sell yourself short. Okay. You're a tremendous stuff. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Great Caddyshack reference. <laughs> Love it. 
Yeah. Um, but okay, so way back when I was a tremendous slouch on Sports Center, um, when I, you know, I do the shot sheet, and I know that, you know, uh, I had somebody's very hard work in my hand. That if I did the highlight improperly or I screwed it up, that their hard work wasn't properly executed. Who was that guy on Fox? Tom, let's let's call him out. Like, was it Terry? Was that the guy who you would when you handed it off? You're like you were wondering if he was gonna oh, actually do no, it right I, you for know, you. I, those, those guys are pros, man. They, they're okay. really really good. Uh, the thing that I was always amazed uh, just in in there was that how how big of human beings Terry Bradshaw and James Brown are. I mean, I think if if I'm not mistaken, I think James Brown wears a bigger size coat than Howie Long. And there's no Howie doubt. Long He's yeah. a, an enormous man. I mean, he's a big dude. And, and, and JB and Terry are big. I mean, Terry, for, for being a quarterback, is a big guy, too. And so, uh, no, but they, I, I never really worried about handing out the shot sheet to, to any of those guys. Okay. They, they've, they've been doing it for so long, and uh, they're, they're really good at what they do. So um, when did you, uh, Tom Herman, now of Texas football uh, here on the Rich Eisen when did you decide, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to – go through the process of becoming a coach, a football coach. When did that, how did that transformation begin? Uh, really, the, the, the summer before my last fall, I, I redshirted. So I, I spent four and a half years in, in college. I graduated in December. And, and the, the last, the summer before my last fall, just kind of, oh, this pondering life and, and what I was going to do. And I, I just always, I wanted I wanted to do something that where, where I woke up before the alarm clock and where where I was fired up every day to do that. And uh, although I had spent my college years, you know, kind of in the, the broadcast world, no offense, it, it didn't it didn't um, impassion me the, the way that really being in the locker room and, and competing on the field did. And obviously, I was I was never going to play this game professionally as as a player. So I. I just said, hey, what's the, you know, what's the next best thing? And, and to me, it was coaching. And uh, I, I knew that I could always do this, and it's, a, it's very nomadic. It doesn't pay very much. I mean, my first job was $5,000 a year coaching Division three football. And, and um, <laughs> I, I always knew at 30, if, if it wasn't for me, or 29, 30, 31, that, that I could always – hang up the whistle and, and go do something else. But I knew that if I was sitting in a cubicle somewhere or, or doing whatever, selling insurance somewhere, that, and at 30, 31 years old, if, if I wanted to go be a coach, that was probably an, an impossibility. So I said, hey, I'm going to try this while I'm young and, and see if it's for me, and, and it stuck. Tom Herman. Longhorns football coach joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show, and now you are running the Texas football program with a camp opening up next week. Uh, what do you tell the rabid Longhorn fan base that is dying for a quick turnaround? What do you tell them, Coach? Uh, well, I, I tell them it's good to have expectations. It's good to want to win. I, I think that's, you know, as, as Mac Brown quoting Daryl Royal, you know, this, this is – one of, if not the best jobs in the world, because tens of millions of people care passionately about how well you do. It can be also a very difficult job because tens of millions of people care very passionately about, about how you do. And so I, I think it's good to have expectations, but I think it's also um, smart to be realistic that, you know, this we've had three straight seven lost seasons. And to expect, I mean, let's look at history. I mean, history... It isn't full of very many programs that have gone three straight, seven lost seasons, and then boom, you, you win 12 games or, or 13 games, or you know you're, you're playing for for national championships. That I, I think that if if we can turn the corner and we can, and when you turn on your TV, Rich, if and when people are in the stands, if they can say that's one of the hardest playing, hardest hitting, most physical teams that that I've seen, then. Um, then, then we'll, we'll be on the right track, and, and the wins will come eventually if we can accomplish those goals. So if my goal uh, going into this interview, Coach, to finish up, was to change your mindset on that punters are people, that they're human beings too, I, I did not accomplish this goal. Can I leave you with any sort of change of heart on the fact no. that these people are human beings on the planet who need to be named? 
Coach? Uh, the human beings on the planet I'll side with need to be named. Absolutely not. No, uh, you're 0-1 on, on, on that try there, Rich. That, uh, um, you know, when, when you only play six plays a game and, and you, you kick the ball for a living, oh. then yeah, I, no, I – uh, No, you I, change momentum. I, no, you change momentum. You change field position. Oh, you, there's, there's, come on. I mean, I, we, we, we play a, a tremendous amount of starters on our punt team. It's, it's phenomenal. Uh, you know uh, – one of our four uh, plans to win is win the special teams battle yes. and the, the hidden yardage. And so uh, I, I realize their importance, uh, but it's, uh, again, just a, a fun thing that I like to have. And maybe it, maybe it encourages them to, to get their degree as well. <laughs> <laughs> it is all about the kids when it all comes down to it, huh? No uh, doubt. It's just a, a form of motivation to get your degree, and then I'll call you by your name. Oh, gosh. Coach, it's been a, a fun uh, chat getting to meet you. I hope uh, it's the first of many times on this show, and I'll try and change your, your outlook at some all point. All right, Rich. Uh, enjoy listening to you, man. Hope Thanks. Warns. Thanks. You got it. Thanks for joining. That's uh, Tom Hearn. The Rich Eisen Show. Weekdays at noon Eastern on radio stations across the country and audience. If you liked some of that, get some more of that on the Rich Eisen Show app. Follow all the information you see right here on the Rich Eisen Show.